And now to set the scene for screening, um, lung cancer has not had a screening test until recently. We did years and years of studies, decades of studies of chest x-ray, and it's just too insensitive <coughs> a test to pick up early lung cancer at a time when it can be cured. But we've now, in the last 20 years, entered the CT screening era. The first results were pretty spectacular from single arm studies. The randomized trials were confirmatory. There remained skepticism, which there always is around lung cancer, and we're so pleased that we have yet another confirmatory trial. Thank you, thank you very much. Indeed, screening and cancer screening is always uh, debatable. Apparently, people have their own opinions, not looking at the facts. But I was going to show you the results uh, that has been shown now today for the first time on the Nelson, which is a randomized controlled population-based screening trial. Um, it's a randomized controlled trial. We recruited people from population-based registries in the Netherlands and Belgium. It is CT screening versus no screening um, at different screening intervals. That's unique, that's novel. Uh, and what we did specifically is we looked at the nodules and the volume of the nodules and the volume doubling time of nodules to say yes or no or to the test result. Well, central reading of CT images, there's an expert cause of that committee, and it's follow up through national registries that are in principle complete 100% coverage in the Netherlands and Belgium. The trial was powered for high-risk males to, de to detect a lung cancer mortality reduction of 25% or more at 10 years of after randomization, so 10 years of individual follow-up, and we included a small subgroup of women. This is then ultimately uh, the randomized uh, arm, the randomized arms, but to get to this number of about 16,000 people we actually had to send out first questionnaires to 600,000 people, get general responses on their question, on their general health, and based on that, we decided on the eligibility criteria and then asked them for informed consent, et cetera, et cetera, and whether they wanted to take part. So here you see uh, 7,900 people on the screen arm, uh, and it means that they got a CT screening, then a, a one year later, another CT, two years later, another CT, and two and a half years later, another CT if, of course, you haven't been detected with lung cancer before. And so basically, we have fierce four CT screenings with an enormous uh, good uptake in the different rounds. Many people that were then invited to get the CT, they really came. The control arm, no screening, just usual care. These are then the, the results. So we had about 27,000 scans done in those four rounds. We had 9.3% indeterminate test results. I'll tell you in a minute what it is. And two, only 2.2 positive test results. So only 2.2% of the people were sent further down for further investigation with the suspicion of lung cancer. 0.9% uh, lung cancers detected, so 243 lung cancers in these people. And that means that the positivity value of your positive test result is 41. If you uh, refer the person for further investigation and he or she asks you, what is my chance that I have lung cancer now? You should answer, I don't know for your individual, but as a group, it's about 40% or so. We did a 9% an additional CT scan uh, to look at volume doubling and time, etc. But we explicitly said to them, at the moment, there's something very minor on the CT scan, probably a scar or a minor abnormality. The only way to do it is to repeat the scan. If we then look at the stages, this is the enormous stage shift we make. This is the cancer registry data in the Netherlands, uh, other people not in the trial. Unfortunately, of course, most people, 50% or so, are at stage four being diagnosed. The control arm, the same thing, but it's the screening arm where there's this major difference only about 10, 12% stage four, and there's this huge importance of early stage disease being detected in the screening arm. This is then the final outcome. If you then look at lung cancer deaths in the mills by time, at year 10, there are 250 people, 250 mills who died from lung cancer in this trial, and only 157 in the screening arm. And that means here at the right hand side that the lung cancer mortality rate ratio is 0.74, 0.74, uh, 
So 26% difference, highly statistically significant, even in the two years before, very steady states. And very remarkably, we see in the females, which we sort of added to the trial from the beginning on, we actually see even more remarkable results, 0 0.39, 0 0.47, 0 0.61. So the conclusion is with this Nelson volume CT screening, we show that males at high risk for lung cancer have a reduced risk of dying from the disease of about 26% in the screen arm compared to the cold sore arm, with a 95 form influence interval between 9 and 40%. And in women, the reductions are consistently more favorable, from 39 to 61%. Very important, these results are more favorable than the, LS, than the first trial now shown, the NLST results, which was clear cut, effective, efficacy, but it suggests gentle differences both that trial, I think, and this trial for sure. So volume CT lung cancer screening of high risk former and current smokers results in low referral rates and a very substantial reduction in lung cancer mortality in both genders. Thank you very much. If you, I, I, I forgot um, to, I added the slides from the discussions. Here you see basically that this is the data from first trial, men 8% reduction, Nelson 26%, women 27% and a bit depending on which year you look, at least between 39 and 61% in women. And if you would then have a sort of equal amount of males and females in your trial, which is really different between the two trials, so just looking at the total numbers in two trials is wrong, then you see 18% reduction in the NLST and 33 to 44% lung cancer mortality reduction in the Nelson trial if you would have an equal amount of gender. Thank you very much. Thank you. Press questions first, please. Uh, Dr. Comey, you didn't mention all-cause mortality. The NSLT, <coughs> NLST had an all-cause mortality benefit of about 7%. Was there one in your trial? So this trial is uh, not powered for all-cause mortality. Uh, I personally think all-cause mortality uh, it's also was an exception to look at all-cause mortality. So initially, this, so this is not powered for all-cause mortality. So, but it's true we find something like a three percent difference in all-cause mortality, but again, not statistically significant. So we looked at it, but yeah, thank you. It's a good the, question, of the course. The other question yeah. is the, your reduction in mortality was substantially higher than the NLS t uh, NLST. Yep. Can, do you know why? Can you hypothesize? <coughs> we obviously don't know. Um, so, uh, very good question again, but uh, difficult to answer now. I think we really have to go into the details now from both trials, and uh, we will probably really do that. Um, I, I, I think a couple of issues. So, first of all, the NLSC did have some screening in the control arm, so that may have diminished the effect to some extent, but probably not enormously. We do have four CT scans instead of three, uh, and, a pair, and maybe that the three annuals are maybe not so effective as, as a bit more spread out. Uh, but I think it is crucial that we, with the volume CT and the, vo the doubling growth rates, et cetera, we apparently are, have been able to pick out really those ones that needed the earlier treatment. So I think if we, I looked at the amount of early treatment, screening arm, control arm, that there is much more difference between the Nelson and the NLST. So that indeed the amount of curative treatment that we have been able to give is probably really higher than we have seen in NLST and then you get this result probably, yeah. Um, Pam Harrison, Metzke. I just uh, wondered if you could comment on the discussant's uh, comment that, that you know, um, lung cancer screening is ready for prime time in Europe, is there any reason why it's not ready for prime time in the US and <laughs> <from> Canada? <coughs> yeah, so, uh, so let's be clear cut. The NLST was the first randomized controlled trial uh, that showed an effect, and that is why the US Preventive Service Task Force already in 2014, based on all sorts of data and modeling and the trial, really came up with a recommendation. So yes, there is already the recommendation for the US, and basically almost not in, any, in, in other countries, uh, there are some countries, but almost none. Why? Because the referral rate in the U.S. trial was something like the 25% or so. And I've always stated it's unlikely that European governments or health policies or whatever will say yes to a trial in which we have to refer uh, asymptomatic people in about 25% to the hospital. So basically the idea is of this specific of this trial is 
we have been able to really come up with a very narrow selection of people to, to go for further investigation, a positive predictive value of 40%. Uh, and now we have shown with that even if we, if we are very stringent in, in, in referring these uh, men and women, then we still have a reduction. So that should now really be uh, an opportunity, uh, uh, more than that, of course, for many, co many countries, governments, etc., and also the US, <laughs> to, to look again and say, apparently there are two large-scale trials. They show large benefits. I, I can speak for the uh, Canadian group, at yes, least our, our right, local group right. here in, in, uh, in Ontario. We are in I the process of uh, implementing our own screening programs. They have to be done very, very carefully. You heard a little bit about nodule assessment. Nodules are very common. We can't be biopsying all these people. So there is a very steep learning cur curve for our diagnostic radiologists, uh, not to overinterpret. And so these programs really should be implemented quite carefully with very strict uh, um, training and with guidelines, mm -hmm. very strict guidelines for nodule management. And the other thing our group is being very involved with in right. Martin Tamamagi is risk stratification, trying to identify our uh, highest risk patients <coughs> to focus on. And finally, these screening programs should also go hand in hand with smoking cessation programs. Yes, correct. Question. Uh, Alice Goodman with the ASCO Post. Um, just to clarify, so did the NLST not use volume reduction and volume doubling time? No. So, so they that's looked new. at so that's that's really new. So they looked at two dimensional the nodules, but then basically on two dimensional uh, the largest diameter basically, uh, and and with that they did an enormous job. And indeed, we think that with the volume and the volumetrics, the nodule volume and doubling time, we can actually do better. All right, moving on to our uh, 